anyone that knows a bit about investment banking, working as the head of risk is like a ridiculous role. You know, it's, um, it, there's, a, there's a, so much responsibility on you. So, you know, really well done. But how did you find it, um, you know, as a woman working in a male dominated industry? Like, how did you manage it? Was there, did you have any difficult moments at all? What was it like for you? Yeah, it was, it, it, I found it extremely challenging actually. And especially because I look a lot younger than my age. So I'm 42 now. And so back then I was late twenties, early thirties. So, um, looked even younger. And so it, and it was, I, you know, looking back now, it's totally my own perception as well. I would always come into a boardroom with the perception that they're going to think that I look really young and that I'm 12 mm. and that I've got nothing to say. So I always felt like I had to prove myself in the first few sentences um, of meeting someone before they would take me seriously. Um, and then, you know, put sort of different Asian cultures on top of that, where it's very, you know, like Korea, for example, is very much, it's your age, like it's, yeah, it's male dominated, but it's also your age and the time that you've spent in the workplace as to, to the hierarchy mm. um, and the seniority. So yeah, it was, it was super challenging and it was just a matter of just like basically getting in there and believing in myself the whole time. And, and probably with a, um, with a lot more sort of like domination type energy mm. than, than really felt comfortable and that, you know, wasn't really me, but I felt like I had to dominate in a lot of those situations. Um, and I guess that that's probably, I think has led me on the path of, um, I guess, losing myself a little bit in, in, in those roles and those images and what I thought I needed to be. Um, in terms of being professional and serious and, um, you know, all those sorts of things. So, yeah, it was challenging. But again, like I also had, like I said before, incredible people supporting me. And I had some, there were some men that were very challenging and dominating back and, you know, some experiences that I had. But there were also some men that were absolutely phen phenomenal and they were by my side and supporting me every step of the way and they had my back in those negotiations and those meetings and um and yeah so i sort of experienced both yeah wow that's good probably like wow this aussie lady is hardcore you know <laughs> 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 Yeah. It's but, funny. Like in my later years, uh, like I, I, I've sort of also have a very soft side to my personality and some of my later friends are like, we can't imagine you being <laughs> like, being like that. I'm like, yeah, there's a tiger in there. Don't worry. Yeah, about definitely. That. <laughs> <laughs> and so the last year has been really tough. Like 2018 was a, you know, tremendously traumatic, uh, tragic, difficult one for you for various reasons. I mean, we'll just t touch on, on the first one. Uh, you've spoken a lot about your dad and uh, sadly you lost your dad. And, um, you know, even through all the, I guess the, the hard times and that he was still such a big part of your life and someone you really admired and look up to, uh, how has that impacted you and maybe made you reflect on your life? Yeah. Um, it's been huge. Um, it's been like a whole variety of emotions, as you can imagine, after him suffering for so long. Um, a big part of me, as hard as it is to say it, was relief that he was finally at peace and not suffering. Um, and, and actually, I can feel a connection with him. Um, so much stronger than I have for many, many years now that he's gone. Actually, like he, I can feel his energy. I can feel him supporting me. I can feel like all those things around yearning to be able to communicate with him. I can now do that. Like, it's really weird. I can't explain it, but it's like he, he's there and he's communicating with me all the time. Whereas in his physical body, he couldn't do that. Um, and yeah, like all that striving and achieving and doing things for external reasons 
is falling away a lot more quickly now that he's gone. I really sort of feel him and uh, all these memories are flooding back of when he was well, when he was younger, just like this spunky, hilarious um, joke star, like just rebel, like just didn't give a fuck about rules and like just would do whatever he wanted. He didn't care what other people thought. Just all of that is just flooding back into my body, just going and him, his message, just going, just be whoever you, you know, be you, be the real you and, and shine and don't care what other people think. And um, yeah, so that, that's been really beautiful. And um, I am so grateful that uh, having Kate and the challenges that I just spoke about becoming a mom and really getting present to the impact that I have on my kids and other people in the world, whilst that was really super confronting the last few years, I've, I've put a lot of effort into healing my relationship with my dad. I mentioned to you before that I was holding a lot of judgment and re resentment. And so the last few years I've had a lot, a lot of one way conversations because he couldn't talk, but really just expressing mm. myself with him and making peace and, and having lots of forgiveness. Um, and I'm so grateful that I was able to do that um, before he passed away, mm. you know, because I think a lot of people hold on to, to this illusion of what they think and stories that they, and I know oh, it feels so real. It feels so real. Um, but it's just a story and a perception, like the truth of, of a connection between a parent and a child, no matter what's happened mm. is just, like it's just this love that you can't describe, you know, and I was depriving myself of that feeling. I was depriving myself of that for, for so many years when it was there all along. Hmm. And yeah, so it, it's been um, a pretty significant event in, in my life. <laughs> obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really beautiful. Uh, yeah. Coxie there, just to imagine that you you know, just flooded with those good things thoughts and feelings as well that's just really great to hear you know i think yeah it's very easy i suppose if it's such a long slow drawn out thing to just um see him your dad in that way but you know when he when he's actually gone you you flooded with those good memories again so that's mm. yeah amazing actually but you know look, uh, oh, sorry okay, sorry i just thought of something uh, mm. um like even like the last couple of weeks before he passed away I was there with him a lot. And I remember one day I was there, um, you know, just sort of, he was laying down, I was holding him and I was expressing like just how much I appreciate how hard he worked for us all of his life and um, you know, how much he loved us and, and, and just sort of like speaking words of love to him. And um, my perception was like, he, he took a couple of swings at me. And he couldn't talk and he was like, really, he kind of got that frustrated look on, on his face. And I was like, whoa. Wow. And I got so hurt by it. And I was like, far out, dad. Like I said, I don't know why you did that. I'm sure you're in a lot of pain, but I love you anyway. And, you know, it doesn't change the way I feel. I'm not sure why you're angry. And over the next, you know, 24 to 48 hours, I drove myself insane trying to trying to work out what he was trying to communicate to me, you know, why is he angry with me and all of that crap that, that you, you know, spin yeah. in your head. And then um, the day that he passed away, the morning that he passed away, I was sitting there with him and I was just, I was playing his favorite songs and I was just in this real connected space with him. And I was basically praying for him to get, the most magical angel wings like and have like an extra amount of bliss given to him for all the suffering that he had had in his life I was just like you know please just like make him so free and just so full of bliss when he goes and as I was sitting there doing that I was also then it was a really weird experience like feeling that that love that I was giving to him, I was feeling that back to me being given back to me through my heart, like a sort of like a cycle thing. And then I heard his voice just randomly out of the blue and it was his cheeky voice. Like he obviously wasn't talking, but his voice in my ears said, um, what did he say? He was like, 
I was trying to give you a hug, you dickhead. That's what he said. <laughs> wow. And I was oh. like, what? And I, I had memories flood back of when, how I thought he was trying to take a swing of me at yeah. me. And he's like, yeah, I couldn't get my arms above my head to give you a hug. Oh, and I was like, boy. oh, shit. And then I was like, I started feeling guilty and I was like, oh my God, like I'd missed this magical opportunity that, that my dad was trying to hug me and all that kind of stuff. And then, and then he just said, and then his voice softened and he's like, it's okay, sweetie. Like everything is okay. Like all wow. of it, all of the past, like everything is forgiven and all that remains now and forever in this moment is that is love and like that exact feeling that, that I was experiencing in that moment so yeah and he, he passed away probably about 10 minutes after that so wow yeah sure yeah <laughs> <That's> <laughs> sad yes mm. waking at dawn packing the gear september tour and up in the air Stop at the toll, digging for change, snowy Cape Fold, my 